Hello and happy feast day. What a joy to celebrate with you and share a few thoughts on our mother Mary and how she's been an inspiration to me as a mother. One of the first prayers I say every morning is a prayer of consecration to Mary. I offer my day to her, my successes and my failures, and I ask her for strength and protection. There are many formal prayers of consecration and they're beautiful, but that's not what I pray. I pray my consecration prayer usually as I'm making my bed, which is fitting, I think, a domestic task for a mother-to-mother -mother chat. I look at the pictures of my family as I pray for them, and that includes a picture of my chalice sponsored kids, so I include you, my chalice family, in my prayers. I did not always have this trusting devotion to Mary. For a very long time, I couldn't really relate to her, even as a mother. I mean, she was born without sin, and she's always portrayed as so meek and humble, pretty much everything that I'm not. She just didn't seem real to me. That began to change when my daughter, Kate, left our home in Halifax to go to university in Toronto. You might know Kate. Uh, she works for Chalice as a writer and photographer and videographer. Anyway, when she went away, she was homesick and miserable. And not just the usual learning to adjust kind of homesick, but really, really sad and anxious. We spent many hours on Skype as she cried and I tried to offer some encouragement and motivation. It was a terrible time for her and for me. I had always been the hands-on mom. I was used to being able to solve problems and make everything okay. There I was, helpless. Kate and I always shared an active faith, so I would tell her that I was praying for her. But even that didn't seem to be enough. So I started to light a candle for her when I went to Mass. It seemed like something concrete and specific I could say. I lit a candle for you. Now, at my parish, the votive candles are below a statue of Mary. So I would light the candle and kneel in front of her and beg her to give my daughter some peace of mind and strength. It helped me. And I think it helped Kate, too, to know that somewhere a candle was burning for her. And I kept the candles burning. I would go to Mass a couple of times a week and on Sunday, and I would light the five-day candles. So there was almost always, literally, a candle burning for her. That simple, repeated act, lighting the candle and kneeling before Mary, gradually became much more than a ritual. It became a conversation and a devotion that continues to this day. Kate did eventually hit her stride and put the darkest times behind her. Our mother Mary had a role in that. And I'm sure she came to Kate's help at least once. In her third year of film school, Kate and a team of classmates were deep into their major production of the year. Not only were their grades on the line, but so were thousands of dollars of crowdfunded and personally contributed funds, all tied up in this film. It had been months of work and stress in the lead up to the actual filming days. On the second to last day of more than 12 hour sessions, her classmate who would be editing the film took the hard drive with everything they had done on it home with him to store on his computer. He took the subway home and in his exhaustion, left the hard drive on the seat next to him. Panicking, as soon as he realized his mistake, he contacted the transit authorities in the middle of the night to track down that hard drive. It's been years now, so I don't remember the whole convoluted story, but it could only have been through divine intervention that they got that hard drive back. I remember Kate texting me, absolutely certain that it was our blessed mother who had saved the day. When I think back on that, I see that Mary was working three wonders in our lives at that time. First, the hard drive was miraculously found. Second, my 20-something daughter was actually increasing in faith while she was away at university. And third, I began to get to know Mary as a real person, a real mother, and a genuine friend. 
the lesson I learned is that we develop a devotion to Mary when we truly begin to trust her. When asking for her intercession becomes more than just words that we say. It's when we realize that she knows all of the struggles, the sorrows, the joys, and the wonders of being a mom. And she wants nothing more than to help us. That lesson was brought home to me many times when I joined the Chalice Mission in Tanzania two years ago. When I met the local women, I would see the expression on their faces when they looked at their babies and their children. And I felt an immediate connection with them because it's the same way I look at my kids. We talked about this in the Chalice Lenten mission, that gaze of love. You can see it on every mother's face, no matter where you are. It's powerful, unshakable, and universal. And it's that same gaze of love that Mary has when she looks upon us. How blessed we are to be her children.